BlackRock is the world's largest investment management business. We'll be discussing some of the key investment themes that have been highlighted within BlackRock CEO Larry Fink's latest open letter to the leaders of the businesses that BlackRock invests some 10 trillion US dollars of investor funds within. Iris, these letters are more than just the musings of an investment manager. It reads like a summary of some of the key investment uh, challenges and concerns that investors are grappling with around the world. And it's a request for response from the world's business leaders. Can we start with your thoughts on why Larry writes these letters? And within this year's letter, why is the concept of stakeholder capitalism so important? Thanks, CTV, and hello, everyone. This is the 10th year that uh, Larry's been writing letters, and if you wind the clock back, uh, it really stemmed from a bit of a frustration with the narrative that was in the market at these companies. And that is to say that, uh, you know, first and foremost, we're fiduciary on behalf of clients, and the narrative at the time was certainly um, focused on short-term profits versus long-term value. And so when Larry started writing these letters 10 years ago, it really was trying to focus uh, companies to think about those long-term sustainable business practices that would benefit the clients that we uh, manage on behalf of and to look at it through that fiduciary lens. So then if you go back to the stakeholder capitalism um, component of the letter of this year, again, it's really grounded in our fiduciary objective and our fiduciary duty, which is we are trying to promote long-term sustainable value on behalf of clients. And in order to do that, companies really do need to think about the various stakeholders that they're beholden to. Very importantly, employees, we've seen that in the last few years, uh, certainly the clients and customers uh, that they're operating you know, on behalf of, and finally, the communities that they're operating in. And so really, it, this concept of stakeholder value is really trying to, again, bring it together and promote that long-term value creation on behalf of clients. And Ben, when you and I have talked in the past, we've often focused on how major economic developments like inflation, interest rates, economic growth rates and, and indeed the, the pandemic are impacting investment decisions. But Larry's letter to CEOs highlights some much broader and very long-term themes for investments. So my question for you is how does BlackRock incorporate these themes and how do you incorporate these themes into your decision-making about investments? So I would say we uh, incorporate them at the absolute uh, foundational level. For us, uh, sustainability risk simply is investment risk uh, in much the same way that inflation, uh, interest rates, and other, if you will, normal macroeconomic variables can impact uh, the value of your holdings. Uh, it seems very clear to us that risks around sustainability uh, positively and negatively can impact the value of one's holdings. So we think of it as absolutely foundational as part of our investment process. We uh, reject the idea of kind of having sustainability as an add-on or as an adjacent to our investment process. We had it as uh, we have it as absolutely foundational. I think another aspect of Larry's uh, letter, which is uh, very interesting, is the, uh, the dynamism of capital markets themselves. Uh, the evolution we've seen over the last uh, years and even decades uh, by which we have come to a situation where there is frankly just so much capital uh, available for entrepreneurs. Uh, and that combined with, uh, I guess, the internet uh, has led to a situation where more and more companies are being uh, disrupted. Uh, and I think for many uh, corporate CEOs of, uh, let's say, uh, existing companies, I think we need to be very mindful of the risks from disruption on the one hand, but also, of course, the opportunities. Uh, and the challenge, I suppose, is can CEOs of uh, uh, existing companies that have been around for a long time can they think about how they disrupt themselves and become the next better version of the uh, uh, of the company? So that disruption mindset isn't just for uh, a couple of uh, 27-year-olds in the back bedroom. I think that's for all of us uh, as we think about how we can flourish uh, over the uh, years and decades ahead. Thanks, Ben and Iris, and, and viewers, thanks for watching. We've really only been able to scratch the surface on some of the major insights and investment themes that BlackRock identifies and is communicating on behalf of investors. For people that do want to find out more, uh, Larry's letters are easily found on the BlackRock website. And for investors here in New Zealand, I'm diving deeper into these issues with both Iris and Ben in ASB's podcasts and blogs that are found on ASB's website.